Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to The Savage Nation. The big news today is that the Muslim Sisterhood here in America has imposed sanctions on Russia and now on Israel. Welcome to the program. Now, of course, on the face of it, the the brilliantly parsing Obama administration, which I today affectionately call the Muslim Sisterhood, has said that they're closing all flights to Israel for the safety of the passengers. Now, on the face of it, you could say, well, that's realistic, and that makes sense. It's for our safety that they're doing it. But what this really means is they're imposing sanctions on Israel, just as they've imposed sanctions on bad boy Putin. They're now imposing sanctions on bad boy Netanyahu. Now, on the face of it, this means that Hamas has won. And that's because the Muslim Sisterhood is sympathetic to Hamas. That we well know. In fact, while I can't prove that the Muslim Sisterhood is operational within the White House, it may as well be operational in the White House. Why just add up all of their decisions and all of their policies, whether it be in Libya or Syria or Egypt, where they try to keep the brothers of the sisters in power? Yes, it's the Muslim Sisterhood running from the White House through John McCain that is now running the United States of America, at least in the eyes of Michael Savage. Now, I want to explain to you what is going on in the world. What's going on in the world is very dangerous. I feel as though I'm back in the original bunker that I created in 1994 when I began in radio. In the, be in the beginning, I needed a stunt, so I said I'm functioning from a bunker. The Michael Savage show began in a bunker in 94. I dropped it by 96. And then copycats picked it up over the years, and I still think it's cute. But the fact of the matter is, right now, we are all in a bunker. In essence, we're functioning in a bunker. We're all in the underground, not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow under this very, very dangerous administration. Every day I wake up, and I hear people screaming for war with Russia over the Malaysia air shootdown. Many in the fake conservative neocon media want war, apparently. Do you think the United States should arm the Ukrainians and let them seize territory from the Russian proxies as so many neocons like Bolton, that's the guy who looks like a walrus, and his followers want? I certainly hope not. I certainly hope you don't because that's what we're hearing from people like McCain, who I think is the most dangerous man in the United States Senate. Listen to clip number one as he screams for war against Russia in a mild tone. Listen. Recognize Vladimir Putin for the KGB apparatchik uh, that he is. Second, it's just been cowardly. It's a cowardly administration that we failed to give the Ukrainians weapons with which to defend themselves. Uh, they, 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 these separatists may not even have occupied and had access to these weapons, which apparently they got at an airfield. And by the way, it takes weeks of training to make someone able to use that system. They're clearly Russian trained, and these separatists are, are the leaders of them are, are Russians as well. Have you heard as much anti-war, excuse me, anti-Russian rhetoric in your entire life? Do you folks really want a war with Russia? Is that what you want? Do you think we should arm the Ukrainians so they can go and seize that part of the Ukraine? from Russia, which is now occupied by Russian separatists? Do you think Russia will sit idly by? That is a chess game. What's the next move? The next move is Russia moves against the separatists on the Ukraine side. What's the next move after that on the chessboard? Why the United States has to send in troops on the ground or bomb the Russians? Is that what you want? Do you people have any idea how dangerous the situation is because of the lunatics in the Muslim sisterhood who are running this country? Now, I used to call them the four horsewomen of the apocalypse. My new uh, title for those secret hands behind Obama is the Muslim Sisterhood. Now let's listen to the next one, and you're going to listen to McCain representing the military-industrial complex in a way he has not done as clearly as he does in clip number two. Give the Ukrainians weapons to defend themselves and regain their territory. Second of all, uh, move uh, some of our troops into areas that are being threatened by Vladimir Putin, other countries like the Baltics uh, and others. Um, to move missile defense into uh, the places where we got out of, like Czech, uh, the Czech Republic and Poland 
and, and other places and uh, impose the harshest possible sanctions on Vladimir Putin and, and Russia. That's just for openers. That's just for openers. Now, what's for closers is a nuclear war to this madman. I think McCain is insane, personally. I believe he was brainwashed in the prison camps. I don't think he was ever sane a day after that. He was a broken man. Here's a man, Senator John McCain, who was supposedly represents the people of the state of Arizona, which is being overrun by criminal gangs, and he's not, not doing a thing to protect his own citizenry in the uh, state of Arizona, yet he's telling the Ukrainians that they need our aid. No, we need the military on the border with Mexico, John. Your brain is all confused. Now, later on in this program, we're going to have an expert on who says, wait a minute, let's not rush to judgment. We don't know who actually fired the missile. We all assume it was... Uh, Russian proxy forces, but we don't know. It's it possible that the Ukrainians fired the missile. Now, I'm not, no, I don't really know who fired the missile, do you? What, because you read it in the Daily News, you know who did it? Because you read it in Murdoch's rag, the New York Post, you know who did it? Are you not willing to hear the other side? Well, you're going to hear the other side. It could be the Ukrainians did it to blame it on the Russians. Remember the issue of the chemical weapons use in the war in Syria? Remember that one? Remember how you were sure that it was Assad who had unleashed those chemical weapons? And many said, wait a minute, not so fast. Maybe it was the so-called rebels themselves who gassed the citizens themselves in order to get world opinion on their side. Do you remember that one? Well, here's a repeat of history. Make no mistake about it, the enemy is very clever. Both the enemy within and the enemy without. Very clever indeed. That's number two. Now, here's number three. If, in case that's not enough for you. Again, the question to you, though, is is this. Should we go to limited war with Russia over the Malaysian air shootdown, as many in the fake conservative neocon media want? Should the U.S. arm the Ukrainians and let them seize territory from the Russian proxies, as so many neocons and false conservatives like Bolton and his followers want? Whatever happened to constraint? Whatever happened to libertarianism? Also, how do you feel about Obama cleverly sanctioning Israel, isolating the Jewish state by closing off all U.S. flights to Israel under the pretext of safety. Do you remember the old adage, we never negotiate with terrorists? Do you remember that one, when we had a real president? We never negotiate with terrorists? Well, Obama has just caved into terrorists. He's just said to Hamas, we give up. We're not flying into that area because you're sending rockets in the area of the airport. We give in. We give up. Do you know what this is going to do to Israel? Israel's liable to be driven into the hands of Russia. Have you ever thought about the in unintended consequences of such actions? If Israel is cut off from the United States, both for weapons and for trade, right now we hear it's only for 24 hours, but you know that could be extended at any moment, uh, where is Israel to turn to sell her goods and to receive her, uh, her needed goods? Well, she may turn to India. Uh, she may turn to Russia. Would that not be an unintended consequence, Mr. McCain? And you ladies inside the White House who don't seem to think uh, through. I mean, you're playing checkers in a world where there's triple electronic chess being played. It's the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-400-7282. There's the other big story out there, which is that of the um, Obamacare business. I don't even want to talk about it. One appeal court rules, okay, it's illegal. It violates the law. Three hours later, Obama shops it to a group of Stalinist judges that he put in there on his own. And his own judges say, no, no, that court's wrong. It's fine. So now we have this situation building up, which is the premiums poised to spike for millions across America because an appeals court rejected subsidies uh, for those on Obamacare, right? Hours later, Obama runs, runs it by appointed judges, and they say, well, nah, those other judges were wrong. What do you think about that case? Then there's another one that's not international or national. It's personal, and I'd like to bring it up. One of the world's richest men, Mr. Slim, of Mexico, has said he's going to a four-day work week in his, in his native land. Four days on, three days off. Four days on, three days off. The catch is it's not four eight-hour days. It's four 11-hour days. Four 11-hour days and then three days off. How do you feel about that? Would you like that as a workplace system for you would you like to work four 11-hour shifts well i think it, it depends on what kind of job you're doing 
uh, and how old you may be. I don't know that anyone uh, over the age of 50 can handle an 11-hour 11, 11 shift, even in an office setting. There's a, there's, a, there's a point at which your efficiency starts to drop off, and I'm pretty sure it drops off well before the eighth hour, or the seventh hour, rather, of your work day. I don't see how anybody could work an 11-hour day uh, on any job unless he's not doing his job. The only people who could work an 11-hour day would be government workers because they don't work at all. I would say a government worker works pushing papers around about an hour a week. Look at the president. Does he work an 11-hour day? I don't think he's worked an 11-hour week since he took office. Never mind an 11-hour day. He's on the golf course. The world's burning, and he's playing golf. Anyway, those are some of the questions that I have for the Savage Nation. And the phone number here is 855-407-282. I've asked you the questions. We've got the callers. You're uh, able to call. And uh, let's go to Louie on WABC in New York. Louie, go ahead, please. Yeah. Hello, hello, Uncle Mike. Um, Mike, i got a request and a statement. And I, it's interesting you hit up hit upon the ten hour work week. I, I I used to work for the post office. Me and my wife together, we worked there thirty years, and uh, we used to work eight hours a day, forty hours a week. And they turned us over to working ten hours a day, four days a week, and it was crazy. I'm over fifty, my wife is sixty, and we just couldn't handle it anymore. So we had to retire, Mike, and that's what we're doing now. And let me get to my request. I wish you'd play a little bit more Cuban music because all the craziness that's going around in the world, that Cuban music really sets me off. And, Michael, my statement is the te white teenagers in this country are minorities. And white men in the world are minorities also, too, Mike. I'll hang up and listen to your, your uh, statement. Thank you. Know, there's nothing I can do about birth rates. I can't help it if white girls just want to have fun. I can't help it if white girls decided that abortions are the way to go and they don't want a husband and children. I can't help it if white men don't have the guts to marry a woman and raise a family. I can't have it if men 35 years old are still acting like they're 15 years old, still wanting to party like, like, like kids in, in high school. I can't help it if the entire West has devolved into a playground. What do you want from me? It's the Savage Nation. 855-407-282. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from. SwissAmerica.com. But we requested it. You got it. Some Cuban music from the great age of Cuban music. Guajira. Unfortunately, there's nothing to sing or dance to today. The uh, Muslim Sisterhood inside the White House has barred U.S. airlines from flying to and from Israel in the wake of a single rocket that landed near Tel Aviv's Ben-Gurion Airport. This means that the Muslim Sisterhood in the White House has, in essence, caved into terrorism. This also means that this flight ban will be Hamas's biggest success in its latest class with Israel because it will, it will increase Israel's physical and psychological isolation from the rest of the world. In other words, the Jews are pariahs again. The Muslim sisterhood just, just ought to send Jewish stars to Israel and tell everyone to sew one on their, on their left arm band. Put a left arm, a little Jewish star on their arm so that everyone in the world can target them and then the Muslim sisterhood will be happy inside the White House. Now, if you isolate a country uh, like this, what are they supposed to do for trade and for uh, required supplies? They're going to have to get it somewhere. They'll either turn to India or to Russia, it would be my guess, or China. They may have to turn to China. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice if under Obama, Israel winds up, uh, let us say, <laughs> on more friendly terms with China than they are with the United States of America? Wouldn't that be, well, Jews like Chinese food. I mean, it wouldn't be so unusual. You know, when you think about that, I think that they like it better than they like uh, uh, hummus. So that wouldn't be such an unusual outcome when you think about that. But not to be outdone by the war drums uh, of uh, the insane McCain is the out-of-work U.S. Ambassador John Bolton. He's, you don't know who he is. Most people never heard of him. He's everywhere on television, mainly on uh, the Gurley show on Fox News. He's a little guy who looks like a walrus. He has an outdated walrus-like mustache that's very uncomely. And it kind of it just gives me a creep factor. Nevertheless, all right, ever, to each his own. I have a beard, so if he likes to have a walrus-like beard, I don't get it. Uh, I'm just identifying him, in case you don't know who he is. He's on now Fox News again uh, on the chorus line. And he's calling again for war. 
in other terms. Now, this is a guy who was a former U.S. ambassador. Listen to clip eight. Well, obviously, it's Russia's fault, ultimately, behaving in a belligerent, aggressive fashion by supplying the separatists, by ginning the separatists up, by commanding and controlling them from Russian territory, by providing this kind of system. It's entirely understandable that something like this happened. And I think the lesson to draw from this is you cannot permit Russia or anybody else to behave this way and allow uh, the U.S.-led NATO alliance to let him get away with it. Let him get away with it. So, John, would you like to put on a uniform and lead the troops in the charge against Russia? I mean, you should lead by example, John. I mean, you're calling for some kind of action, aren't you, John? Instead of sitting on your little behind in a studio or in your house in Washington, wherever you may live, John, why don't you go back, uh, take a position in the U.S. military, you must have some friends there, put a uniform on and lead the charge. Go to Ukraine, fight with the... Uh, with the uh, Ukrainians, and lead a charge against the separatists, John. Lead by example, as they do in Israel. That's why so many lieutenant colonels were killed over the last few days in Israel. They don't sit in the Defense Department calculating the next defense contract. They actually lead their men into battle. Unlike you, John, you just talk because talk is cheap, John. Unfortunately for you, talk has consequences. Now, for anyone to call you Ambassador John Bolton is sickening. You never were an ambassador. You always were an embarrassment, not an ambassador. Unbelievable to me. These are the neocons that I'm trying to warn you about. These are the neoconservatives that are banging the war drums. These are the neoconservatives who are saying with certainty that Putin did this on purpose. He wanted to shoot down a, a, an airliner with passengers on it. Well, in exactly 10 minutes on the Savage Nation, we have a guest on, Paul Joseph Watson, who says, wait a minute, not so fast. He is saying, what about the other side? Is it possible that the Ukrainians, either accidentally or on purpose, shot down this passenger jet and are trying to blame it on Russia to do exactly what they've done, which is turn world opinion in their favor? After all, all is fair in love and war. Is it not possible? He's asking, where's the radar data in the plane shoot down? They won't release it. That is, the Ukrainians will not release it. The radar data, they will not release it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. By the way, I wonder whatever happened to tell Vladimir I'll, I'll be flexible if I'm reelected. What about the old reset button? Don't we realize this is an old KGB apparatchik that is hell-bent on restoring what he believes is the Russian Empire? That's so brilliant. You know, John McCain, he should get a Nobel Prize because the context of that is so brilliant. And I've never heard the phrase old KGB apparatchik at least in 10 minutes. And all we hear is that he wants to restore the old Russian empire. You know what, John? I, Michael Savage, wish we had a nationalistic leader to restore the old American empire, John. Instead of seeing it melted down with the help from you by melting our borders with Mexico, John. But let's go back to the shootdown of MH17 and who did it we don't know who did it we assume that Russia did it because that's what the government media complex has told us they don't know whether the that's true or not but that fix, fits the narrative of evil Russia and uh, good Ukrainians but the question is being raised by some in the media who are actually doing their jobs uh, mainly Paul Joseph Watson of Infowars he is asking, well, let him ask it himself. I don't want to repeat what he, uh, have him repeat what I'm going to tell you he already wrote. I thought it was pretty interesting. Paul Joseph Watson of InfoWars, thanks for joining us again on the Savage Nation. Hi, Michael. Good to be back. So what is it you're saying that Kiev will not release? What will the Ukrainians not release? They will not release the air traffic control tapes in communication with the Malaysian Airlines flight. We know that the first Malaysian Airlines flight that went missing back in March... The transcripts of those air traffic control communications were released within three days. Yet what happened in this case was that within hours of the downing of Malaysian Airlines Flight 17, Ukraine security services went to the air control towers, seized the traffic control tapes, and we've heard nothing of them since. So obviously you've got Russia coming out with radar images suggesting that this flight was being tracked by Ukrainian jet fighters. If if that's not the case, then Ukraine needs to release these air traffic control tapes because they will prove their narrative. They seem to be having a lot of difficulty proving the narrative coming out of Kiev and Washington because most of their evidence is based on 
YouTube videos uploaded by the Ukrainian government and dubious Facebook posts from so-called rebel commanders that have already been debunked. So all I'm saying is show us the evidence that backs up your narrative behind this shootdown. Well, look, on the face of it, using logic, Russia has nothing to gain and everything to lose by having downed a commercial airliner. Okay, that, let's start with that. Right now, world opinion has shifted to the poor Ukrainians. And we learned from our UN ambassador, Samantha Power, that her entire knowledge of the situation is based upon Facebook and YouTube postings. They don't know what the hell is going on. You and I both know it's about the natural gas and squeezing off the Russian cash flow. Wouldn't you agree with that? It is, exactly. In the larger context, of course, the shootdown happened literally the day after the BRICS nations came out and announced their anti-IMF, anti-dollar system, which, of course, represents a major threat to the unipolar world system, the new world order being pushed by the likes of NATO and the Obama administration. But you mentioned, again, Samantha Power. There's actually a really fascinating exchange which just came out a few hours ago. It's up on Infowars.com between State Department spokesperson Marie Hoff and an AP reporter, Matt Lee, who actually does his job and challenges the U.S. government, you know, acts in an adversarial role, and basically says, look, the, quote, forensic evidence that you've supposedly provided to prove that this jet was shot down by Ukrainian rebels is based on Facebook posts, for example, by this rebel commander. It, it turned out within a day that this Facebook page was put up by fans of this commander, so the words couldn't even be attributed to him. And the post was talking about the shootdown of a military transport plane. It had nothing to do with Malaysian Airlines Flight 17. So this is the kind of evidence that Washington and Kiev is saying, you know, is the slam dunk that proves this was shot down by the uh, rebels in, in eastern Ukraine, and it's, it's just not good enough. Why would anyone have sent a commercial plane over a war zone is the number one question. Uh, other planes had bypassed this exact flight path. Who do you think sent this commercial airliner into a war zone? It could only have been air traffic control operating out of Kiev. I mean, All right, wait a minute, listen to this. So you're saying air traffic control in Kiev lured them over the area? I don't know if that's the case, but... If you look at the previous 10 flight paths of this very jet, MH17, before it was shot down, they all pass well out of the way of eastern Ukraine. And then on this one day, they're ordered to fly directly over the conflict zone. They're ordered to lower their altitude, change their course, and the plane gets shot down. So you've got all kinds of stuff going on in that air traffic control tower, which would give us a great insight into why that plane was diverted over this conflict zone which the vast majority of other carriers avoided, but they don't want to release the tape. They've seized the tapes and they refuse to release them. Well, what you're saying makes sense to me because neither Russia nor the eastern Ukraine separatists had the ability to order air traffic control to shift the path of MH17 to the north to bring it over the kill zone. There was only one controller that could have ordered that flight to alter course, and that would be in Ukraine itself. Would you agree with that? That's that makes the most sense to me. And then on top of that, apart from, you know, quote, Russian propaganda saying that the jet was followed by Ukrainian fighter jets, you have aviation experts based out of the U.S. that are saying the same thing, that it looks like it was diverted either with air traffic control but with also with the direction of these fighter jets. So if we got the released air traffic control tapes, then we would know for sure if Malaysian Airlines Flight 17 was indeed being tailed by Ukrainian fighter jets shortly before it crashed. And, of course, that would change the whole perspective of the official narrative that's being pushed by Washington and Kiev right now. Mm -hmm. So all you're asking for is release the air traffic control tapes, and Kiev will not do that, to summarize it. Is that correct, Mr. Watson? That's correct. And there's also another big story which you put out which ties into this, which is Robert Parry, who broke a lot of the Iran-Contra stories working for the Associated Press and Newsweek, he has a source who told him directly that the U.S. has satellite images which show that the missile was fired by Ukrainian soldiers. They've got the images of the Ukrainian soldiers in their uniforms. Now, that's, that's a credible guy. That's not some Internet conspiracy theorist. Um, Robert Parry is a credible, award-winning journalist. He's developed sources over decades. He's got a source that's saying that it, the missile was fired by Ukrainian forces in their uniforms and that the U.S. has proof of that and is not releasing it. So, again, that's just as credible as Q 
TF coming out and saying, oh, we uploaded a video, here's a Facebook post where the rebels claim responsibility. That's not forensic evidence. It's, it's not good. Are, well, the one who, okay, let, let's look at who gained most by this tragedy of shooting down a commercial airline and killing all those people. Did Russia gain? No. Who gained? The Ukrainians gained. So you have to say, let's look at the evidence on both sides before we rush to judgment and wind up banging into another war with Russia, which is, God forbid, uh, what's liable to happen if we listen to idiots like Bolton and McCain who are screaming for war. In, in more words than one, all you hear from them is we mustn't let them get away with it. They're uh, old apparatchik of the KGB. We must make them pay. What do they really want? What do they want? What do these lunatics want, Paul? Well, they're obviously trying to encircle Russia. Russia's not even really expanding. They're being surrounded by NATO bases. But again, I think it's just the threat of a good example of, you know, an alternative system to this IMF system based on the dollar, which the BRICS countries are introducing. Then you look at it in further context. You know, these sanctions against Russia were completely toothless. The Russian stock market has gone up in the past few weeks. They needed a reason to beef up these sanctions, which is now happening in the aftermath of this incident. And Ukrainian forces in eastern Ukraine were suffering heavy casualties in fighting with these separatist rebels in the days running up to this incident, to this shootout. So if you place it in context, Ukraine was basically crying out for a cassus belly to really ramp up both these sanctions and put pressure on Russia not to support these rebels. So it's very convenient timing, to say the least. Well, the narrative in all the newspapers in America is evil Russia shot the plane down on purpose. If you ask the average jerk in the street who has even a, a knowledge of this, and I don't even know how many Americans even care about it, they'd say Russia did it and they'd move on. And that's because the evidence was presented uh, by uh, those who want the outcome to be that the Kiev, that Kiev the, 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 those in Kiev, are, are the victims and Russia's the evil, the evil bear. But there is someone who's writing that this is a replay of the Lusitania scam in, in World War II when the passenger ship Lusitania, which by the way was carrying a, a covert military cargo, was intentionally sent into a part of the Atlantic Ocean known to be crawling with U-boats to bait the Germans. And what happened was the Lusitania was, was sunk. And that then gave the war cries in America that were needed at that time. And right now, we have to reiterate on this show, on the Savage Nation, that neither Russia nor the Ukraine separatists in the East have the ability to order air traffic control to shift the path of the Malaysian plane to the north to bring it over the kill zone. Somebody brought it over that kill zone, and there had to be people in the western Ukraine, in Kiev. That's what most people who have a, the ability to analyze things are saying. Hold it, not so fast. Especially when you hear people like McCain screaming for war. And here's, here's another aspect to it, Michael. The separatist rebels don't even have, they don't have possession of the book missile system. That's not coming from Russian propaganda. That's Ukraine's prosecutor general who stated, quote, the military told the president after the passenger plane had been shot down that the terrorists did not possess our book missile systems. So that's Kiev itself admitting the day after the plane was shot down that these terrorists don't have access to those systems. So again, you well, When you say terrorists, let me repeat, the average listener doesn't know they've lost control of this because they don't know as much as we do about this. The word terrorist applies to the Russian proxy forces in the East, right? Exactly, yeah. All right. And, and uh, in Kiev, July 18th, it was published by Itar Tass, militias in the self-proclaimed Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics do not have Ukrainian air defense missile systems, Buk and S-300 at their disposal. And that was said by Ukrainian Prosecutor General Vitaly Yarima, according to Ukrainian Pravda newspaper last Friday. They said that the terrorists, meaning the Russian proxy forces, do not have our air defense missile systems, Buk and S-300. They said it themselves. And again, the, the U.S.'s case, Kiev's case, is also based on another YouTube video. Again, this is their forensic evidence, which they claimed showed one of these book missile systems being transported back over the border into Russia, having been used to shoot down the airliner. People investigated that. They saw the street signs. It turned out almost instantly that that missile system was traveling through a town in Ukraine. It wasn't heading back to Russia. So they've got all these so-called slam dunk pieces of evidence based on Facebook posts and YouTube videos and each one of them in turn has been completely debunked so what do they have left they haven't well I don't look we don't know we don't know who actually 
did this horrible thing of shooting down a commercial airliner, but we do know that we haven't heard both sides of the story. And I'm not so quick to rush to judgment when the stakes are so high, especially when it makes no sense for Russia to have shot down this airliner. Now, even if a Russian separatist had done so by accident, which is certainly possible, that's not a pretext for war, as McCain and John Bolton seem to think, is it? I don't believe so. There was a good um, Peter Hitchens article, actually, on the weekend, which made the point, you know, mourn the victims, but don't turn this tragedy into a global catastrophe. And that's mm. what those kind of people risk doing with that rhetoric. So... You know, if they really want to go toe to toe with Russia, it's it's going to be a, a disaster situation. Another another aspect to this, with the investigation, is that the black boxes, which have now been recovered, obviously, are heading back to England to be analysed after initially supposedly being handed to the Dutch to be analysed. So, of course, British Prime Minister David Cameron has been vehement ever since the incident happened in blaming Russia, and now Great Britain is going to be analysing the black boxes so i wonder if are you kidding well ms13 will take ms13 will set it to say whatever they want it to say and so the narrative is in russia's bad we need sh sanctions it's all a scam to grab the uh, shale or the shale deposits uh in ukraine and convert it into gas and to crush russia russia's economy and to keep the porno shops running in europe next uh, winter uh with the shale oil you know, before you go, and maybe you can stay with us another minute, remember back when we were heard about chemical weapons being used by, by Assad, and then there were reports that maybe he didn't use them, maybe the so-called U.S.-backed rebels in Syria used them on people themselves? Whatever happened with that story, Paul? <laughs> well, that's interesting, because obviously now any skepticism towards this shootdown of the airliner is being characterized as Russian propaganda. It of was course. also characterized as Assad propaganda. Yes. Question the Guta chemical weapons attack. Oh, uh, Paul, can you stay with us another few minutes? Because that's exactly right. Every time I get up here and try to use logic and reason, they call me a front man for the KGB. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. It's 55 minutes after the hour. You're listening to the one and only Savage Nation. We're talking about the shootdown of the Malaysian airline plane from a different perspective. We're asking who actually did it. You've rushed to judgment because Murdoch and everyone else in the media has already said the Russians did it. New York Post, Vladimir Putin did it. Insanity. We don't know that. That's number one. Number two, we learned today that his opposition in Kiev, Ukraine, will not release the air traffic control recordings, which would tell us a few things, namely, who ordered the Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 to, go, to change course and fly over a war zone. It's awfully suspicious. With us has been the reporter Paul Joseph Watson of InfoWars. Wars. Paul Joseph Watson, welcome back to the program. Paul, remember the Assad incident with the chemical weapons? They all said Assad did it. Some said, wait a minute, maybe the so-called Syrian rebels uh, did this. What, whatever happened with that story? Well, that's right. I mean, for a year beforehand, we were saying, look, they're going to stage a chemical weapons incident. They're going to blame it on Assad. He's got nothing to gain from doing it. Of course, we had the Guta chemical weapons attack in August 2013, immediately blamed on Assad based on, again, a YouTube video. We said that we developed sources in Syria that said, no, it was the rebels that were behind this attack. We put that evidence out. We almost went to war based on a YouTube video. January 2014, MIT study, again, not the Kremlin, not Russia today. This is an MIT study concluded that the chemical weapons attack could not have been launched by the Assad government because it wasn't launched from a government-controlled area. So, again, we were proven right in doubting the veracity of that YouTube video, which almost sent us to war, and again demonized at the time as Assad propagandists, just as now are being demonized as Putin propagandists when we're just trying to get to the truth of what That's right. I want both sides of the story, and I hope my listeners have an open mind as well. Paul Joseph Watson of InfoWars, always a pleasure. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be back for another two hours right here on your local station. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, 
psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. This was done by the so-called separatists, uh, which are, by the way, special operations, special forces uh, of uh, Russians that are Russian-trained, Russian military that call themselves separatists. I think there is already compelling evidence that they thought they were shooting down, again, another Ukrainian air transport aircraft. Well, I'm a front for no one but myself, and I'm a front for the truth. It has been said that all is fair in love and war. And as you well know, the other day, the Israelis were tricked with an old trick when the Hamas terrorists, the friends of the Muslim Brotherhood, the friends of John McCain, the Muslim Brotherhood, friends of Barack Obama, the Muslim Brotherhood, when the Hamas terrorists popped out of a tunnel wearing Israeli army uniforms. So the Israeli troops were, for a moment, momentarily stunned, and they got mowed down. They lost a large number of members of their most elite uh, uh, special forces brigade, the Golani Brigade. Of course, this was done before in war. We know, for example, it was done in World War II, during the Battle of the Bulge, and many other times it was done. And last night I was studying biochemistry again. I got so bored of the news. I got so bored of the news that I went back to what I originally went back to, which was science. I originally ran into science to get away from the world. I wanted to find the truth, and I knew I could never find truth in the words of man. So I looked for truth in the activities of chemicals, uh, the identities of animals and plants, and I stumbled upon a compound. I'm just going to give you a little tiny piece of it, not to have you memorize it. I'm not giving you an exam. I was just now looking up the biochemistry of gout, for example. And there was a drug called allopurinol. And allopurinol is used to treat gout. It's an old treatment for grout. For, for, not for drought. It's an old treatment for grout. It's an old treatment for gout. I could use some grout treatment for my bathtub. So uh, allopurinol is used in the treatment of gout, right? And what allopurinol does is that it, it mimics, it looks like, hypoxanthine. It's a competitive inhibitor of xanthine oxidase, and it reduces urate production. Well, that all sounds like Greek to you, but it isn't. Many drugs are created to look like a biochemical compound that is necessary to create something that you don't want created. And so it blocks the creation of that particular uh, bio, uh, biochemical uh, uh, compound. And what I'm getting at is, in this incident in Ukraine of the shootdown of the passenger jet, we don't know whether it was Russian separatists, as is the narrative coming from Obama and the frauds in the neoconservative media, who are really old Ronald Reagan cold warriors, uh, who've never seen the heyday that they had when they were at war with Russia. Remember that. The old Ronald Reagan apparatchiks, who were everywhere you can imagine, even in radio, acting as, oh, we're conservatives, bre beating their chest, real fire-breathing conservatives. They all worked for Ronald Reagan. Now, Ronald Reagan was a man, and as such, he was a flawed man. And one of his flaws was, is that he needed to constantly beat the war drums against Russia. That was then. That was the height of the Cold War. And it worked for him. Well... Now we have an Obama administration that seems to want to take one of Ronald Reagan's uh, tactics, which is to stir up a Cold War with Russia, which they've done. Witness all, even Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton said not too long ago that uh, Vladimir Putin looks like Hitler. Remember that one? How diplomatic of a secretary of state. So Putin is now Rasputin. Putin is the new enemy. Putin is now the, the new enemy not only of the Muslim sisterhood, which apparently runs through the White House, uh, but also the uh, brotherhood that runs through the media. And I'm saying, wait a minute, we don't know who did it. The only one to lose by this is Russia. The only one to have gained by this is Kiev. So you have to say to yourself, wait a minute, going back to my biochemical analysis, could it be that the operatives in Kiev, the so-called good Ukrainians, put on uniforms, used weaponry of the enemy, in order to neutralize the enemy, the way Hamas did with Israel, the way that chemical did in that 
uh, chemical examiner, a chemical, chemical example I gave you from clinical biochemistry. I'm not saying they did. I'm not saying they didn't. I have no way of knowing who shot the airliner down. But I'm not going to rush the judgment with all of the others who are saying Russia did it and we should go basically to war with them. If you start screaming about sanctions and more sanctions and close the banks to them, which is some of the nuts like this walrus, Wal uh, Wahlberg is doing, whatever his name is, Walton, Walder, I don't know what's his name, Walter, Walter, Walnut, what's his name, Walton? I don't know, I'm supposed to know, John Walnut, or John Walton, Bolton, Bolton, I'm supposed to know him, no one knows who he is. He's a miserable, out-of-work neocon. He was a U.S. ambassador under Bush. He has no job other than to talk on Fox News. And he's saying it's clearly Russia's fault, but it gets worse. Listen to what this nut is saying in clip nine. You have to look at this strategically. I would, I would begin to bring Ukraine into the NATO alliance. It's more than just uh, here we go. with weapons. Bingo. Uh, I go back to building a national missile there defense system go. for the United States. This is to show Russia that they cannot act with impunity. And, and if people want sanctions, let's talk real sanctions, mm -hmm. not these pinpricks that we've been engaged in. Let's bar all Russian financial institutions from any participation in American financial markets. That's a sanction. Listen, moron, let me explain what would happen. If you were to bar all Russian financial institutions from any participation in American financial markets, why don't you think through the consequences? I realize that a government agent like you has never had to work for a living, so you don't really understand business. You, you don't understand the interconnectivity of business today, do you? Because you're still operating from the point of view of being a government worker who collects a government check and has a government pension. But if you were to bar all Russian financial institutions from participating in American financial markets, have you thought through what might happen? Well, let's go back in time. World War II was started when Japan was not permitted to get oil and its economy was going to stall. What did Japan do? It invaded Manchuria for oil. Did Japan want to invade Manchuria? It did not want to invade Manchuria. It was forced into invading Manchuria for oil because the same type of rhetoric said, let's stop Japan from getting oil. Well, Japan needed the oil, so it took the oil from Manchuria. That basically set off World War II. Uh, we all know about the attack on Pearl Harbor, but that followed the invasion of Manchuria, and that was an economic it was an economic move that drove Japan into that position. So be very careful, Mr. Bolton, in speaking way beyond your pay level, because you don't know what the heck you're talking about. Because if you do impose such sanctions, banking sanctions on Russia, you're going to drive Russia into an act you may not really want. It's called unintended consequences. Again, that's something they didn't teach at Harvard. And so it's strange to me that we're hearing about sanctions on Russia. At the same time, we see that the o Obama administration has today imposed sanctions on Israel. Now, of course, they won't call it sanctions. They said they did it for the safety of those on American airplanes. But nevertheless, they impose sanctions on is Israel by saying U.S. flights are, are forbidden from landing in Tel Aviv. Immediately, the um, neo-Soviet empire in uh, Europe called the EU did the same thing. So Israel's now isolated. No flights in, no flights out. So who won by that? The winner in that is Hamas. Why would they want Hamas to win? Because it's, it's simple. The Muslim sisterhood in the White House wanted Hamas to win. They wanted to send a message to Hamas that they're the, uh, uh, the little David and Israel's the Goliath and that the U.S., wink, wink, although it's inhibited from saying so because of the tremendous Zionist presence all over the media, we inside the White House and the Muslim Sisterhood are on your side, brothers. And so we're going to do everything we can to send you those signals. And today we're going to stop sending, allowing flights to land in Israel. Israel will be starved. They'll have to stop their uh, war against your poor innocent uh, uh, brethren in the, the Muslim Brotherhood known as Hamas in, in, in uh, Gaza. I realize that's a lot of information that I gave you from the beginning of this hour until now. And I realize that it's as dense as a Persian miniature. They're very unusual for uh, current American media and current American radio. But <clears throat> I have to give you everything at once in order to give you anything at all. Write that one down. Sometimes I have to give you everything at once in order to give you anything at all. Do you understand what I just said to you? I cannot conduct this show on the most basic of levels, good, bad, they're good, they're bad, we're good, everyone else is bad, Russia bad, Ukraine good, can't do it. In other words, that's not the way the ball bounces, that's not the way I think. I analyze things, and what do you tune into the show for? My meatball recipes? The stories about Teddy? I don't know, maybe. 
I think the majority of people who have learned to love the Savage Nation over these last 20 years have come to appreciate my ability to think things through and analyze with them, not for them. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from. SwissAmerica.com. I, I always reference the Bishop, National Catholic Con uh, Bishop Conference of Bishops statement in which they said maybe Jesus was a refugee from violence. Let us not turn away from these children and send them back into a burning building. That's the bishops. And that's, so we have to do this in a way that honors our values but also protects our border and, and uh, does so in a way that the American people understand more clearly. The human cuckoo clock, uh, Nancy Pelosi, comparing the children's pouring over the border to uh, baby Jesus, not talking about the fact that 20% of them are not children. Uh, they're uh, hardened uh, grown ups, men disguise themselves as 16 year olds, some are gang members. It's astounding to me what's going on that the border crisis has been completely obliterated by the shoot down of the Malaysian airliner that was a day after a day after immigration became the number one issue in the minds of the average joe out there in america a day after the golfer became uh, had his lowest poll numbers ever a day later the jetliner gets shot down by uh, somebody over ukraine and immediately all of the the border people that are surging over are forgotten and a report just came out that 96% of the illegal alien children have been released to sponsors, so-called, in the United States. In other words, they've been set free. Obama has passed amnesty without passing amnesty. He is the greatest fraudster in the history of the United States government. Never in history have we ever seen a fraudster like this operating outside the law. We have open borders. We have open borders and a closed society. We have open borders and a police state. We have open borders and a surveillance state. We have open borders and a warmongering state. It's amazing to me. Open borders. Did you want a massive influx of people into this country who do not know America's borders, language, and culture? Do you think that that's good for America? Can anyone listening to this show explain to me how bringing in people who are illiterate in Spanish... They may be able to speak it in a rudimentary fashion. They cannot write it or they cannot read it. That's the largest percentage of them are illiterate in their own home language. Can anyone explain to me what this will do to our schools, to our hospitals, and to our society at large? Does anyone out there believe that this wave of immigrants is the same as the Eastern European immigrants who came here and basically built America? Because if you, if you say that, then you're truly insane. Then you're so blinded by your liberal doxy that you can't even see straight. Not all immigrant groups are the same. They're not the same. Just as not all people are the same, not all immigrant groups are the same. And that's why you have immigration laws. A, a sane nation has immigration laws which define who you want in the country. And how do you determine who you want in the country? You determine whether you need them. What do you need? What skills do you need from them? Well, according to Obama, we certainly want people with no skills. We want illiteracy and no skills. So you can increase the welfare state so you can increase the number of those dependent upon big sister do you not see that for what it is okay maybe you do and now we turn our attention to Diane Feinstein Diane Feinstein I'll never understand how a mayor of San Francisco could wind up not only a senator that I could see because that's not such a distinguished position but how a woman with such a questionable resume could wind up as chairman of the uh, committee that she has, which is the most powerful committee in the U.S. Senate. Listen to her in clip number 18, Diane Feinstein. This is amazing. If we can hear it, it'll be even better. Look, I'm not going to tell the president what to do, but I think the world would very much respect his increased attention on this matter. Um, and I think there ought to be increased attention. 
So the other day, Diane Feinstein says that uh, Vladimir Putin should man up and admit that his people shot down the plane. Today, it, she attacks President Obama for being uh, inattentive. I guess she's now become sort of the uh, school mom with the ruler, slapping the boys on the on the wrists. She's now speaking for the feminists. I guess she's taken on a new role. I I thought that was someone else's role, but here she's now attacking Obama in in a uh, offhanded jape. All right, let's take some callers on the Savage Nation. Where's the uh, former? Okay, W R is it W R J? Yeah, it's W R J. W yeah, I I don't have dyslexia. It's W J R. It's W J R. Who's put, d giving me the dyslexic uh, signals? Todd on W J R. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hey, good afternoon, sir. You know, I thought that was a pretty interesting interview you were conducting with the uh, with the gentleman who was over in Europe. I forgot his name now. Uh, uh, Paul Joseph Watson of uh, Infowars. Not, not not bad. Um, however, uh, we I, I do want to point out something, and it's neither here nor there, but we absolutely actually know who did that. There's when you system. say when you say we, who is we? Physically knows who did. Right, you're not wait, wait, Todd. Who is we? What do you mean we know? Who's we? Well, the White House and the administration and anybody in Intel knows it. Um, he, All right, so they know who did it, but that doesn't mean they're ever going to tell us the truth. They're going to give us the narrative that they want. Isn't that true? I would say I wouldn't say it like that. I would say instead of asking everybody else for the information, Russia and Ukraine. Uh, the separatists, because, you, you know, that's not going to happen. Why don't we start pinging our own government to give us the answer? Because that because you're never going to get it from a lying administration that lies about everything. You're going to ask this administration to tell you who actually shot the plane down? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Sa hey. Today I wake up and a federal court had struck down Obamacare subsidies in 36 states. Within only a few hours, the wonderful individuals inside the Obama machine shopped it to another federal court who restored the subsidies to the 36 states. In your lifetime, have you ever heard of a federal appeals court being overturned in such a short period of time? No. That's because you've never lived in Argentina before. But now that we're living in the Argentina of Barack Obama, he can create a federal court overnight. He is the federal court. He and the first lady and the um, attorney general are the new federal court for any anything that they wish to change. Now, here's the most the strangest soundbite I've ever heard in my life. I don't know how this came up, but it's Obama rambling on about the first lady. And he said things that make no sense to me. Let's begin with clip 15. You know, sometimes... African Americans in communities where I've worked, there's been notion of acting white, which sometimes is overstated, but there's an element of truth to it where, okay, if, if boys are reading too much, then, well, why are you doing that? Or why, why are you, uh, why are you speaking so properly? Can you believe that a president would say things? I don't know what he's talking about. It gets even worse in 16. Listen to this now. The notion that there's some authentic way of being black, that if you're, if you're going to be black, you have to act a certain way and wear a certain kind of clothes, that has to go. Because there, because there are a whole bunch of different ways for African-American men to be authentic. Okay, I guess he was trying to say you don't have to wear your pants hanging under your behind? Is that what he was getting at? I don't know what he was saying. I, I don't know. Is he telling people how to dress now? But it gets even more interesting in clip 17. Listen. You look at Michelle. She, she grew up south side. And her mom still is in, in a neighborhood where gunshots go off. And it, 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 it can be rough in, in, uh, where Michelle grew up. Oh, but yeah. she, she'll, she'll talk proper when she needs to. Oh. Now, you also don't want to get on the wrong side because she can translate that into a different vernacular. This is very telling. I, I don't know what he's talking about. But I guess she grew up so poor and she has to make up for it now by acting like Imelda Marcos. Uh, after all, she's entitled to it. I mean, she grew up poor. She's entitled to act like Imelda Marcos. Or, Mer, you know, or, uh, she has 70 assistants. She flies wherever she wants, whenever, on official business, of course. Press is not a lot to follow. 
I mean, there's nothing here. I mean, there's nothing you could say about it. I just don't understand what it means by dressing and talking black. I don't get that. I mean, my best teacher when I was in school was a black math teacher. I never thought he dressed black. If I remember correctly, he was a nice, thin guy with a nice suit and tie. I didn't, I didn't ever pay attention to what he was wearing. He was a great math teacher. Now I guess I have to pay closer attention uh, to how people dress. And now we have one of the four horsewomen of the apocalypse talking about something very interesting. Is clip 20. I, I, I won't even introduce it. Let's listen to clip 20. This is very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Number 20. That's my, my what it is. big thing, uh, 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 chips and, and guacamole. <laughs> like, like basically if there's a bowl of good chips and guacamole, uh, he loses. I, lose his, I lose my mind. <laughs> I lose so my that mind. explains it. That explains his policy decisions. They're ba it's the guacamole that did it. That explains it. Now it gets even better in clip 21. Hear this one now. Uh, and uh, the first lady, French fries. But, but I, I'm going to say this. I'm making a vow. I'm going to take a, a break from, from really? French fries. Yeah. Wow. That's big. Well, I know something else that's big, but it's not the French fries. Uh, I like them, too. I'm not going to take a vow. I had them just the other day. But now that we know that it's the uh, guacamole that helps cause him to lose his mind, I think that we should impose an embargo on avocados into the United States of America. And I think all avocado trees should be sh should be chopped down in order to preserve the president's, <laughs> the president's mind. <laughs> I mean, you can take things too literally, too, you know. It's like me, uh, the things I say, people take me too literally. I mean, you should listen to me. It doesn't mean you have to, every word I say, you don't have to crucify me if you don't like me. Let's go to uh, Iolia in BAP, on BAP in Dallas, Texas. I, I can't pronounce the name properly. I'm sorry, but it's I think it's Iolia. Iolia, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yulia, good afternoon. I would like to comment on the global situation we have right now. This whole situation with the plane is it's a disaster for entire world because right now we have two giants that are about to go into the war and it's it's not going it is not going to benefit anyone at all. Of course not, but that's why I keep trying to say on the show somebody has to stop guys like McCain and this idiot John Bolton who are literally calling for war with Russia. Exactly. And I have family on both ends. My dad is half Polish and Ukrainian. I have a family that just evacuated from eastern U Ukraine that has to hide, that has to do anything possible because the good guys are called bad guys and the world doesn't know any better. Most of our kids don't know where the capital of the United States of America is. That's right, and any sane diplomat would not be trying to steam up things. They'd try to be cool them down. Any sane senator would not try to make things hotter but colder. That's why I feel that my job is so important, and I hope you appreciate uh, that what I did today on the show was say, wait a minute, not so fast. You're rushing to judgment against Russia. Let's hear what the other side has to say. Maybe there's another side to the story. And I would love to thank you for your multi-perspective opinion. And I wouldn't call it an opinion because you give people choice to pick and make their own mind about the situation of what's going on. My right, but me, the minute I do this, you, Julia, I'm trying to use, I'm anglicizing your name, Julia, the minute I try to say let's slow down and le let's look at both sides, former government agents who are now in the media accuse me of being a front for, for, for Vladimir Putin. We live in a world that likes labels. If you don't like this, then you this. I mean, pretty soon the word vinegar will be against the law you know i mean the thing is we can't live by labels we have to open our eyes so our children can live normal life that's right i agree with you and i thank you for listening so carefully julia which is julia in the english version and the woman waited a long time to say it's time to stop the rhetoric and calm down we don't want two superpowers uh clashing again on this planet we don't want this to happen, and yet lunatics like McCain are calling for war without saying so. Out-of-work academicians like the walrus guy, uh, former Ambassador Bolton, saying it's clearly Russia's fault and we have to punish them. These are very dangerous people. But the most dangerous, of course, is McCain.
who continuously bangs the war drum and does not defend or protect the border with Mexico while his own citizens are screaming for help. Here's McCain again. If you missed it, you have to listen to this. Listen to him calling Vladimir Putin not only a coward, which is, which is beyond comprehension. I'm convinced that Vladimir Putin could wipe the floor up with this old drunk, but listen to clip one. Recognize Vladimir Putin for the KGB apparatchik uh, that he is. Second, it's just been cowardly. It's a cowardly administration that we failed to give the right. Ukrainians. Let, let's stop right. I can't take any more of it. Oh, I'm sorry. He called Obama cowardly. Sorry. I had that one wrong. He, so he attacked both world leaders. He's bigger than both of them. All right. Well, I'll tell you one thing um, McCain knows is rockets. He definitely knows his rockets because it was a Zuni rocket that accidentally misfired on his jet on that aircraft carrier that almost sank the jet and cost hundreds of lives. So, look, you got to take it from where it comes. This man knows his rockets. That's right. It was the old Zuni rocket that was fired on the uh, airplane that he was sitting in on the uh, Forrestal, I believe. It almost sank the ship. Now, anyone could press the wrong button. You can't you can say he did it. Just because he was last in his class at Annapolis doesn't mean he's a dummy. Just because he's shamed the McCain name uh, doesn't mean that you have to condemn the man. I mean, we have to love McCain forever because he was a prisoner of war. And as you well know, we've been taught that he's sacred. And he's a sacred cow that can never be criticized. But he's way outlived his usefulness as a U.S. senator. He did so when he became a rhino and called for amnesty. Now he's gone so far out of bounds that uh, he's becoming an absolutely dangerous man. He's not a loose cannon. The man is worse than a loose cannon. It's like a loose stomach, never mind a loose cannon. All right, I've had my fun. We've talked about the Ukrainian shootdown, no one cares. We haven't said one word about the Middle Eastern war, which is a big deal. We have not talked about the fact that the uh, banning of flights into Israel by Obama, Obama's FAA, is, is Hamas's biggest success. We're not talking about the fact that Netanyahu is now isolated on the world stage by Obama and the uh, emerging new Soviet European Union. It is a big story. It is a big deal. The Jews have once again been tar brushed as the enemy of so many in the world. And uh, I don't have to say, would you expect them not to defend themselves against rockets that are flying into their country? Would you expect them not to? to go to war to defend their children and their women. No one is arguing that we're happy that Palestinians are dying in Gaza. Everyone would say that's a horrible human tragedy. But when you're using women and children as a human shield, what do you expect to happen? I would expect that the EU should have said to the Hamas murderers, we condemn you for putting your women and children in harm's way. We condemn you for using them as human shields. But instead, no, once again, it's easier to blame the Jews because let's face it, after all, there are more Arabs than Jews. The Arabs have more clout, more money, and therefore, which side do you think, which side do you think they're going to take? Which way does the wind blow? And so again, that's a dangerous situation that uh, is worth talking about. Beef price hits new record. Did you know beef went up? I don't know. Price of beef and bacon reach all time high. It's a store. I don't eat bacon. I eat beef. I don't know. It went up. I paid 31 bucks for a steak in a restaurant the other night. It was good. I eat one steak every month or so. Eggs are up 7.5%. It was like real estate. I mean, maybe the egg should be the new, uh, the new form of trade. Maybe we should get, give, get rid of our paper money and we should trade in eggs or in poultry or in fish, like in the old days. Maybe that would be where you can barter in fish, eggs, and poultry and not use uh, paper currency. Would that work? I mean, then you need to carry around a little refrigerator with you to, to do would that work out if we bartered in fish, eggs, and poultry? Because they're really pegged to inflation. See, what you don't know is that commodities in some ways do reflect the actual inflation that we're living through. You know, the, 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 fel the false story being put out by Yellen on the Federal Reserve is that we have no inflation. We have, a, we have an inflation. Look at your real estate prices. That's inflation. The index for meats, poultry, fish, and eggs is inflation. And that's important to know. But uh, look, that's not a, a sexy topic. I thought one that you'd re you know, react to and you'd want to talk about was the four-day work week, which is that Mr. Slim of Mexico, the richest man in the world, has, I think, put all of his workers on a four-day uh, work week, four days on, three days off, 
And on the face of it, everyone would say, yeah, good idea, three-day weekends. But you have to work 11-hour days, four 11-hour days. It's still not, is that, yeah, 44 hours, four 11-hour days, and then you get three days off. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? I guess it depends on the job you're in. If you're in government, it's a good idea because they don't work 11 hours a year. So what's the difference if they have to work on, on the clock for 11 hours a day? Senators don't work 11-hour days. Could I do an 11-hour day four days a week? I couldn't do it. I never could do it. No matter what my jobs were, I could never have worked an 11-hour day. I would have died. And I'm going way back. I was a, once a factory worker. Let me go back to the jobs I've had. I, my first job was selling comic books on the sidewalk in the Bronx. And that was not an 11-hour day. I marked down comic books. My father was smart. He taught me the value of money. He said, look, when you threw at that comic book, it looks like new, doesn't it? He said, well, don't throw it out. He said, take a crayon, run a line through it. I think they were 10 cents at that time. I don't know what they were. And he said, mark it down, make it 7 cents. And he said, take a little soapbox out in front of the apartment building and put all your comics out there, and kids will buy them. I couldn't believe anybody would buy a used comic because I figured if I read it, it was used. It was damaged. Well, sure enough, I put the comics out, and kids lined up to buy a used comic. Seven cents, would you take six? Already the lawyers were lining up. They, they bargained me down from seven to six cents. I sold some at five even to future doctors, believe it or not. But uh, the government, people would form, eventually go into government and try to steal the comics for, uh, from me when I turned my back. They said that you had no right selling used comics, and they tried to grab them and run down Longfellow Avenue. But all right, they got caught. The point is, is that are we at a break? I'm telling people stories about jobs. That was not an 11 hour a, a day job. I'll be right back to finish this. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. That's Normal people are planning vacations. I'll be sitting here in front of the microphone until I drop dead. It's, it's just my fate. It's just like a almost a biblical fate. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. I'm just thinking out loud. I don't mind it. Family says, Dad, don't you want to go somewhere? No. Dad, don't you want to go to the Caribbean on a yacht? No. Dad, don't you want to go to uh, Latvia to get a latka? No. Don't you want to go to the Mediterranean? And uh, No. Don't you want to walk around Rome? No. Don't you want to walk around with the mass of tourists in Paris? No. I'd rather not see Hamas in Paris. No. No, thank you. Well, don't you want to go to London? No, I'd really rather not see veils in, in London, if you don't mind. I'm perfectly content to stay where I live, and if I want to go to those places, I just you can go on the Internet. That's, that's, why would I want to go anywhere? I, I, maybe I should, though. Maybe it'd be good, good for my mental health to get away. If I start to sound like McCain, I'm finished. Do you think McCain should have competency hearings? You know, I really want to raise a serious topic. I think McCain is insane, and I think that he could get this world in a worse state than it's already in. I think that Feinstein is nuts. I think that so many people should be banned from public office. Should there be an upper age limit on people in public, in public service? Like 80, 100, whatever. How old is it? Isn't she about 78, Feinstein? Shouldn't they say 80 is the limit? Like, at a certain age, you can't drive, right? At a certain age, should you not be able to be a senator, a president, a congressman, a postman? Should there not be an upper limit like age 80, let's say? 79, 77? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Playing some or original American music here by uh, rap artist 50 Cent. I don't know what you heard about me, but it's the Savage Nation. And we've been talking about the situation of the shootdown of the Malaysian airliner. Who did it? We don't know. Yet people are rushing to judgment. They're saying go to war with Russia in more words than one. And I've been outraged by McCain in particular. 
and that guy with the walrus mustache who's everywhere now, the out-of-work uh, Ambassador Bolton. And I'm saying, wait a minute, somebody's got to stop this. Somebody's got to. Then we moved into the four-day work week because Carlos Slim, uh, the richest man in the world in Mexico, has put his workers on a four-day work week, four 11-hour days and three days off. And then I raised the issue at the end of hour number two of competency hearings for John McCain, which led us to the question of whether there should be an upper age limit for uh, senators, congressmen, and presidents. Should there not be an age limit? In other words, you can't be a, a senator after age 80. Because they're, they're getting, I mean, they're drooling on themselves, some of them. And as I learned in graduate school from my then professor, who was dean of the School of Public Health, he was a wonderful medical doctor, and he said to me, the first thing that elderly people lose is their judgment. They don't know it. The first thing to go, in other words, on the road to senility. I, I was once uh, deeply involved in Alzheimer's research. In fact, you don't know this, but you can research unless they've purged it out of the Soviet press called Wikipedia. I once ran a group called the Alzheimer's Research Institute, and I wrote a very fine book on the subject. And it was a pretty advanced book for its time, and now it's become mainstream in some ways, which everyone's talking about diet and exercise and antioxidants to prevent the uh, amylation of the, uh, the cords in the brain. But whatever, the point I'm making is, he said to me that the first thing to go in, the, in, in the older people is their judgment. And McCain clearly has lost his judgment. One of the giveaways I've noticed, whether it's Pelosi or McCain, is the salivation. Uh, the excess salivation during conversation seems to be an indicator of, of uh, early onset stupidity, which is not yet a disease. But early onset stupidity is one thing if it's just you and your husband. But if it's you and the world, I mean, early onset stupidity can lead to, to dire consequences. Or in the case of McCain, if it's him and his wife, it can certainly lead to dire consequences. How could this guy be a senator and yet be in front of cameras from New York to L.A.? let alone Kiev, Russia, wherever there's a camera, there's McCain. i got to admit that I'd like to know what he's on. I'd also like to see a drug test for everyone in Congress. I mean, if you take a job for a corporation, you have to pee in a cup, correct? Well, all right, that's fair. You know, if you're a pilot, you can't fly if you're stoned. Why should you be able to be a, a senator if you're ripped on something? But in McCain's case, I'd like to know what he's on, if it's anything. Because, I mean, i gotta, I got to admire the guy's energy, as loony as he is. The man could fly all over the world and agitate crowds and then fly back to be on, on MSNBC and that night appear at a dinner, the next morning work uh, in the Pentagon to see what he can get, you know, squeeze out of him. The next day he could be on the back of a beer truck giving out Budweiser. I don't know how the man does it. So as I say, it would be, it would be useful. I, I don't want any prohibitions on the drugs they use because we'd have no, no Congress. In other words, if it was illegal to be on medication or drugs, uh, we'd have no Congress. The country would come to a halt. That might be a good thing. I don't know. But I'm not calling for any restrictions. I'd just like to know what they're on so I can decide what to take. I'd like to know who McCain's doctor is. I'd like that extra boost of energy. I think it's just genes in his case. But in all seriousness, what, what do you think about some of these topics? WABC, Tom, thanks for holding uh, McCain, the issue of McCain. Should he be subjected to any kind of tests? Yes, Michael. I would love to see John McCain and Nancy Pelosi be held accountable to com competency hearings, maybe even Harry Reid. I mean, Nancy Pelosi was the one who wanted to pass the Affordable Care Act and just said in, on public... Yeah, and she's also saying that the unaccompanied minors are sacred and we're great Americans and Jesus was an unaccompanied minor. But the fact of the matter is, according to the lieutenant governor of, of Texas, are you listening to this? You're not going to believe this headline. 85% of illegals coming into Texas are not, are not unaccompanied kids. 85% of them are not unaccompanied kids. There are only 20% of those coming in. 80 to 85% of those pouring over the border, there are 25% of, of them who are, have criminal records according to the U.S. Border Patrol. So we're going to believe Nancy Pelosi on this or the Border Patrol who's paid to do the job. Thanks for the call. No question about that. No question indeed. Let's go to the next caller, Thomas uh, in uh, Georgia. No, let's go to Nashville, Tennessee. I haven't heard from Nashville in a while. WTNN. Carolyn, welcome to the program. What's your topic? Um, Michael, how are you doing? I'm talking about the... Uh the shift hours that you were talking about. Right. So how many... Would you like a four-day work week, 11 hours a day? 
I work three days a week for 12 hours at a time, and I'm 56 years old. I have Hashimoto's, which is um, hypothyroidism. Yeah, I know. It's low thyroid. I know, I know very well what that condition is. So you must really run out of energy. I am exhausted, but I have to do this for my family. So, uh, And what, what kind of job do you hold, Carolyn? I work a very physical and mentally demanding uh, production job for a major car company. I don't know how you can do it. Three 12-hour shifts, but after eight hours, you must be dead. I am dead on Mondays, but I'm telling you, I have to do it for my family. Otherwise, um, I, <laughs> I would be dead. But um, All right, I so you, you're getting a full, are you getting a full-time paycheck? Um, I work 36 hours. And that's what I get paid for. So there's. Oh no my God! So they did it to short you on the four hours, so you're not full time, so you don't get any any health coverage. I'm still I'm still considered full time, and I get the best health coverage. Oh oh, so you you are full time. So you you do 36 hours in three days. You get a you get all the benefits. You're exhausted, but you need the job. If I can do it, you can do it because you're a strong and smart man. Well, I'm not looking for a job like that. <laughs> At this stage of my life, if they offered me a job on radio for three 12-hour shifts, I think I'd have to <laughs> say no. But I admire your, your tenacity, truthfully. Georgia, Thomas, what do you think about a four-day work week, 11 hours a day each? Well, hey, you know, I mean, just like the previous caller, I work the same amount of hours. Only I work 36, I mean, I worked 12 hours a day, three days a week, Monday through Wednesday. And then we did four hours just to make up for the 40 on Thursday. Uh, three and a half a day weekend. Um, I, if you ask me, that's plenty of time to recuperate from a uh, from a hard work week. Uh, All right. So, so you like longer hours and shorter work days in the week. I mean, yeah. shorter number of days, right? Right. Yeah. You know, that's interesting. I mean, I think of my own job on the radio. It's three hours a day, five days a week. Okay. If I take a day off, which is pretty rare these days because the news is too too uh, incendiary, I I can't sit still. I can't enjoy myself. If I take the day off, for example, I prefer Wednesday to any other day because then I'm working two on, one off, two on, two off, that kind of thing. When I was in college, there was a period at which I selected classes so I'd have no classes on Wednesday. I loved going Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. I loved having Wednesday off to study, to bum around, whatever. And I still like that break, but I don't do it because the news is too, is too hot, number one. But number two, what would I do on my day off? I'd wind up listening to the fill and agitating myself, saying he shouldn't have said this. I'd be calling the board operator to tell him to get more calls up. So I don't even take days off anymore. I'm becoming uh, more obsessive about my career than I ever was because there's no way to take, what, take a day off from what? Being alive? This is the most alive thing a man could possibly do. I know you say, no, it isn't. All right, I admit, maybe if you're a parasailer, that's probably better than being on radio. If you're a skydiver, I would say it's more exciting than being on the microphone. I, I admit that, obviously. If you're flying a jet in combat or even training in a jet, I would say that's more <laughs> exciting. Racing a car, racing a boat, yes, I could see that. Okay, I understand that. But in terms of white-collar jobs that are not like that, this is about as good as it gets, I mean, especially for me, and I'm not yet salivating into the microphone. I mean, when the day comes that I start to sound like I'm on a sucking candy, like Nancy Pelosi, I, I will not wait for them to give me the, 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 the gold watch. I'll just go and get the gold watch. The day I start to sound like I'm drooling into the microphone like John McCain, no one will have to tell me, Mike, it's time for you to find another, you know, another occupation for yourself. I'll just leave radio. It's that simple. But thus far, I'm not drooling into the microphone yet, nor am I sounding like a lunatic to most of my listeners. Now, I admit to some, no matter what I say, is considered lunacy. If I talk about borders, language, and culture, that's laughable to the communists. If I talk about closing the border with Mexico, that's laughable to the communists. If I talk about English as the only language in the land for official business, that's lunacy to the communists. If I talk about people coming into the country who disrespect our culture, that's lunacy to the New World Order of communists. I get that. But I really don't care about them because I am a champion for America's borders, language, and culture. That's what I began with, and that's what I'll end with. It doesn't matter whether the world agrees with me or not. All that matters is I know it's right. That has always been the definition of a nation. A nation has always been defined by its borders, language, and culture. I created that. 
I created that in 1994. How else would you define a nation? By its values? Nancy Pelosi defines it by its values, and she says Jesus was an illegal immigrant. Can you believe this? When 85% of those coming in are not unaccompanied children, according to those in Texas who are on the ground? So it's all lies out there. And we're losing our sovereignty, and it's being done on purpose by Obama. There's no question about that. So what can I say to you? What can I say to you? I've got to do what I think is right and do it over and over again. No matter how many times I'm criticized, I'm going to continue to do it. WABC Marjorie, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Well, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, Michael. I wanted to remind you that it was uh, Putin, President Putin, who reminded us of, in America of two radicals in Boston, which our country, our administration, seemed to ignore, the upshot of which is, Three people were killed, and all the or so many people lost their limbs. Uh, are you talking about the Boston Marathon bombing by the Muslims, the Tsarnov brothers? I'm talking about uh, Russia reminding President Putin, reminding America that there were two radicals in Boston, in the United States of America, Boston, Massachusetts. No, but are you talking about the Boston Marathon bombing? Yes. Yes, I yes. and the brother's son off the two Muslims, you say, were fingered by Putin and what, America ignored them. Is that what you're uh, trying to tell us? Exactly. Our our, uh, yeah, I get it. Of course they ignored them. Of course they ignored them. What do you mean they ignored them? They encouraged them, probably. The Muslim sisterhood in the White House and the government looked the other way on purpose. The only enemies of America are patriots, returning military veterans, those who wear crosses, uh, and those who... Uh, oppose abortion. Those are the enemies of the Muslim Sisterhood. So they impose sanctions on Russia. They impose a, a, a sort of sanction on Israel, saying it's for the safety by closing routes to Israel, which, as you well know, is giving a prize to Hamas, the terrorists. And Netanyahu is now urging uh, 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 Lurch, Kerry, to restore flights into uh, Israel. Lurch is over there, as you well know. Lurch is globetrotting uh, on uh, Ketchup One. They gave him a new plane, a new seven, a, a new old seven oh seven, and they re, they painted it red and they called it Ketchup One. Uh, Youngstown, Ohio, Chris. Oh, Youngstown, Ohio. I finally got some out of Youngstown. Chris, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hello, Doctor Savage. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Yes, sir. Uh, um, McCain should have been gone a long time ago. He's off his rocker. All of those people should be drug tested. Um, so you agree with me we need drug testing and upper age limits, and McCain is a lunatic. Well, at least someone out there agrees with me on that. I mean, you listen to McCain, I swear to God, the guy's crazy. Crazy by the minute. Hey, look, I'm flat out of time. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from, SwissAmerica.com. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. It's 25 minutes after the hour. If you're thinking of visiting France this summer, think again. The uh, pro-Palestinian thugs are rioting. They're doing what Hitler's brown shirts did in France uh, and other portions of Europe in the 1930s. They're doing it under the guise of being in favor of the, the, the Palestinians. But in the Paris suburb of Sassé, Palestinian rioters broke shop windows, set fires, and attacked Jews in the streets. It's history repeating itself, and as a result, Jewish self-defense groups in France are gaining traction after the spate of anti-Semitic attacks on synagogues during the pro-Gaza rallies. Jewish vigilante groups tackling Arab mobs are finding growing support. They've learned never again means never again. And so shortly before their synagogue became shrouded by tear gas and smoke, a hundred French Jews holding baseball bats and clubs were singing the French national anthem in front of the synagogue's heavy metal gate. They had gathered outside the main synagogue in this Paris suburb to defend it against a predominantly Arab mob of 200 men who had gathered nearby with sticks and stones, setting garbage cans aflame and chanting, Slaughter the Jews. Did you hear what I said? Once again, Slaughter the Jews is being sung in the streets of Europe. Only this time the Jews are not cowering in their apartments. They're out there with bats and clubs. 
The Jewish defenders were not singing for the rioters. Their performance of La Marseillaise was intended as a gesture of gratitude to the 100 police officers clad in anti-riot armor that prevented the Arab mob from approaching. And so the Arab scum, unable to reach the grand synagogues of Sarce, instead smashed Jewish shop windows in this poor suburb where tens of thousands of Jews live among many Muslims. And the Arab scum torched two cars and threw a firebomb at a nearby smaller synagogue, which was lightly damaged. And so once again, ladies and gentlemen, we're witnessing the arrival of Hitler, only this time he is not speaking German, nor is he wearing a swastika. He is wearing a headscarf, and he is speaking Arabic. This is the ninth synagogue attack in France since Israel launched their war in Gaza two weeks ago. And now the French came to understand that they have to rely on themselves for their defense. That's what will be coming to America if we don't slam the immigration gates shut. And if we don't get very selective in who we let into this great nation. Because once they gain a population majority in any community, you'll see the same thing in your community. Put aside your liberalism and try to open your eyes to survival. That's all I ask you to do. It's the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The uh, Muslim sisterhood inside the White House has barred U.S. airlines from flying to and from Israel in the wake of a single rocket that landed near Tel Aviv's Ben-Gurion Airport. This means that the Muslim Sisterhood in the White House has, in essence, caved into terrorism. This also means that this flight ban will be Hamas's biggest success in its latest clash with Israel because it will increase Israel's physical and psychological isolation from the rest of the world. In other words, the Jews are pariahs again. The Muslim Sisterhood just, just ought to send Jewish stars to Israel and tell everyone to sew one on their, on their left armband. Put a left arm, a little Jewish star on their arm so that everyone in the world can target them. And then the Muslim sisterhood will be happy inside the White House. Now, if you isolate a country like this, what are they supposed to do for trade and for required supplies? They're going to have to get it somewhere. They'll either turn to India or to Russia, it would be my guess, or China. They may have to turn to China. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice if under Obama, Israel winds up, uh, let us say, on more friendly terms with China than they are with the United States of America. Wouldn't that be, well, Jews like Chinese food. I mean, it wouldn't be so unusual. You know, when you think about that, I think that they like it better than they like uh, uh, hummus. So that wouldn't be such an unusual outcome when you think about that. But not to be outdone by the war drums uh, of uh, the insane McCain is the out-of-work U.S. Ambassador John Bolton. He's You don't know who he is. Most people never heard of him. He's everywhere on television, mainly on uh, the girly show on Fox News. He's a little guy who looks like a walrus. He has an outdated walrus-like mustache that's very uncomely. And it kind of it just gives me a creep factor. Nevertheless, all right, every, to each his own. I have a beard, so if he likes to have a walrus-like beard, I don't get it. I'm just identifying him, in case you don't know who he is. He's on now Fox News again on the chorus line, and he's calling again for war in other terms. Now, this is a guy who was a former U.S. ambassador. Listen to clip eight. Well, obviously, it's Russia's fault, ultimately, behaving in a belligerent, aggressive fashion by supplying the separatists, by ginning the separatists up, by commanding and controlling them from Russian territory, by providing this kind of system. It's entirely understandable that something like this happened. And I think the lesson to draw from this is you cannot permit Russia or anybody else to behave this way and allow uh, the U.S.-led NATO alliance to let him get away with it. Let him get away with it. So, John, would you like to put on a uniform and lead the troops in the charge against Russia? I mean, you should lead by example, John. I mean, you're calling for some kind of action, aren't you, John? Instead of sitting on your little behind in a studio or in your house in Washington, wherever you may live, John, why don't you go back, uh, take a position in the U.S. military, you must have some friends there, put a uniform on and lead the charge. Go to Ukraine, fight with the... Uh, with the uh, Ukrainians, and lead a charge against the separatists, John. Lead by example, as they do in Israel. 
That's why so many lieutenant colonels were killed over the last few days in Israel. They don't sit in the Defense Department calculating the next defense contract. They actually lead their men into battle. Unlike you, John, you just talk because talk is cheap, John. Unfortunately for you, talk has consequences. Now, for anyone to call you ambassador, John Bolton, is sickening. You never were an ambassador. You always were an embarrassment, not an ambassador. Unbelievable to me. These are the neocons that I'm trying to warn you about. These are the neoconservatives that are banging the war drums. These are the neoconservatives who are saying with certainty that Putin did this on purpose. He wanted to shoot down a, a, an airliner with passengers on it. Again, the question to you, though, is, is this. Should we go to limited war with Russia over the Malaysian air shootdown, as many in the fake conservative neocon media want? Should the U.S. arm the Ukrainians and let them seize territory from the Russian proxies, as so many neocons and false conservatives like Bolton and his followers want? Whatever happened to constraint? Whatever happened to libertarianism? Also, how do you feel about Obama cleverly sanctioning Israel, isolating the Jewish state by closing off all U.S. flights to Israel under the pretext of safety? Do you remember the old adage, we never negotiate with terrorists? Do you remember that one, when we had a real president? We never negotiate with terrorists? Well, Obama has just caved into terrorists. He's just said to Hamas, we give up. We're not flying into that area because you're sending rockets in the area of the airport. We give in. We give up. Do you know what this is going to do to Israel? Israel's liable to be driven into the hands of Russia. Have you ever thought about the unintended consequences of such actions? If Israel is cut off from the United States, both for weapons and for trade, right now we hear it's only for 24 hours, but you know that could be extended at any moment, uh, where is Israel to turn to sell her goods and to receive her uh, her needed goods. Why well, she may turn to India, uh, she may turn to Russia. Would that not be an unintended consequence, Mr. McCain? And you ladies inside the White House who don't seem to think uh, through? I mean, you're playing checkers in a world where there's triple electronic chess being played. Now, I want to explain to you, what's going on in the world is very dangerous. I feel as though I'm back in the original bunker that I created in 1994 when I began in radio. In the beginning, I needed a stunt, so I said I'm functioning from a bunker. The Michael Sabbath show began in a bunker in 94. I dropped it by 96, and then copycats picked it up over the years, and I still think it's cute. But the fact of the matter is, right now, we are all in a bunker. In essence, we're functioning in a bunker, not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow under this very, very dangerous administration. Every day I wake up, and I hear people screaming for war with Russia over the Malaysia air shootdown. Many in the fake conservative neocon media want war, apparently. Do you think the United States should arm the Ukrainians and let them seize territory from the Russian proxies? As so many neocons, like Bolton, that's the guy who looks like a walrus, and his followers want? I certainly hope you don't, because that's what we're hearing from people like McCain, who I think is the most dangerous man in the United States Senate. Listen to clip number one as he screams for war against Russia in a mild tone. Listen. Recognize Vladimir Putin for the KGB apparatchik uh, that he is. Second, it's just been cowardly. It's a cowardly administration that we failed to give the Ukrainians weapons with which to defend themselves. Uh, they, 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 these separatists may not even have occupied and had access to these weapons, which apparently they got at an airfield. And by the way, it takes weeks of training to make someone able to use that system. They're clearly Russian trained, and these separatists are, are the leaders of them are, are Russians as well. Have you heard as much anti-Russian rhetoric in your entire life? Do you folks really want a war with Russia? Is that what you want? Am I too cynical for this business? I, don't, I, I happen to think I'm too cynical for this business. Maybe I should retire. Maybe I, maybe I see larceny in the hearts of all politicians. And maybe for that reason I should not do radio anymore. I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm just too, too cynical for this business. In the Republican primary, who is it going to be? It's going to be Rick Perry versus who? The ice cream man cometh? The one from Florida? Whatever his name. Everyone forgot him? I forgot his name. Celia Cruz, the other one. What's his name? Not Ted. Rubio. Rubio, the ice cream man. Another one. All of a sudden, the Rubio, because he had a vowel on the end of his name, he was the hero of the Republican Party. Now, Rubio crashed and burned a year and a half ago when he came out for amnesty. Remember when he joined McCain in the calls for amnesty? That was the end of Rubio. So who was going to run? Rand Paul? Rand Paul's going to run against Rick Perry. He doesn't stand a chance. Rand Paul cannot win.
Rand Paul cannot win against Rick Perry. It's impossible. By the way, that's of his name. Yeah, the father's Ron and the son is Rand. They're very good men, by the way. Don't get me wrong. That's a wonderful family. They're a great American family, the Pauls. But Rand Paul can't win. Rick Perry could win against Hillary. Rick Perry is electable. Rand Paul is not electable. The Texas National Guard has been called out by Governor Perry, and I salute him for it. Long overdue, and I believe it's going to take him right to the White House. There's no one on the Republican side who can beat him. Moreover, he'll probably beat Hillary Clinton. But you do know there's going to be a rift between him and the federal troops. Obama will do everything he can to make certain that the hordes of illegals come over this border. You know what's going to happen. But I can ask you how you feel about that. Meanwhile, in Israel, there are other um, things going on in the Gaza campaign that you should know about. Seven Israeli officers and men died. They jumped out of a tunnel uh, in Israeli uniforms and flak vests, ambushed the Israelis, and look, all's fair in love and war, and killed them. It happened in every war. Surprised the Israelis didn't know this would happen. There's something about the uh, Israeli operation that you probably don't know, and that is this. This is the first time in Israel's history that Israel is fighting with solid Arab backing from Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. You don't know this. Israel is on the front lines against the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas are one and the same. And if you go back in time, you will see that it was John McCain again who went to Egypt to try to make the Egyptians keep the Muslim Brotherhood in power. And those of you who are Jewish and liberal, yes, you heard me. Maybe it just stopped your heart. Those of you who are Jewish and liberal and continue to vote for Democrat, ask yourself why your hero, Barack Obama, has so vehemently supported the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and elsewhere when it is their cousins in Hamas who are killing the Israelis. You're going to have to come to terms one day with what I'm telling you. But for the first time in Israel's history, Israel is fighting with solid Arab backing from Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. They want to obliterate the Muslim Brotherhood. And that's why this block, the Egyptian-Saudi UAE block, has actually blacklisted Gutter for supporting the Muslim Brotherhood and for patronizing the Palestinian Hamas. I don't know if you understand that. The U.S. is now firmly on the side of Qatar, a Gutter. However, they, you know, that's one country that no one knows how to pronounce. I don't know what country could be called Gutter and get up in the morning, but we'll call it Gutter. They're our number one ally in the Middle East, and they're on the side of the Palestinians and on the side of the Muslim Brotherhood. It's unbelievable to me. And so I doubt very much that there's ever going to be an effective mediation, or at least in, in temporary mediation, for a Gaza ceasefire. I don't think it will happen. I do not think it will happen. And I don't think Senator Kerry is going to make uh, much of a difference when he goes over there. I don't think there's anything he can do. He has no credibility so, so far as I can tell. There is a new, powerful Arab bloc, and it's on the side of Israel. And if Kerry wants to get on the side of reality, he's going to have to twist the arms of Egypt, of Saudi Arabia, and the UAE, as well as Israel, because they're all on the same side. That's what's going to have to happen. So I'll be right back on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. We talked about why are we hearing only one side of the Malaysian air shootdown. I don't know who did it, do you? Look, there's a missing link. The missing link is the air traffic recordings in the black box. They won't release them. Who won't release them? Oh, not the devil Putin. No, your friends, the Ukrainians, the friends of the military-industrial complex, the friends of the big sister oil companies, the friends of John McCain, the friends of those who want to go to war, have nothing to say about the fact that it may have been shot from the other side. We don't know. Let's hear both sides. Well, we heard both sides today. The Ukrainians will not release the recordings in the cockpit just before the shootdown. That's very odd, isn't it? Also today, the U.S. is isolating Israel. They've basically imposed sanctions on Israel. They didn't say that. The FAA closed all U.S. airlines routes to Israel in the name of safety for American passengers, right? Is it really for safety or is it to isolate Israel and cut off their ec the economy? You know what it is. It's the United States and the EU, the New World Order, saying to Israel, drop dead, you have no right to determine whether you'll live or die. We'll determine whether you'll live or die. So they closed the air routes to Israel. 
They've imposed sanctions on Israel. Am Yisrael Chai. All of the liberal Jews still vote Democrat. How come? How come? I'll let you figure out how come. Ruling by imperial Cree and everyone lines up to salute Obama. Meanwhile, more Obamacare confusion. A court, a federal court, has ruled that the subsidies for Obamacare are illegal. Wow. Well, but the government said no. The court doesn't know what it's doing. We know better than the court because we're God. Yep. And guess who's going to review the uh, appeal today? Well, of course, the judge is appointed by the commander-in-chief. So there we go. Flight diverted after rocket lands near Tel Aviv. FAA closes route to Israel. Now European airlines suspend flights to Tel Aviv. The bans of the flights is Hamas's biggest success in its latest clash with Israel. In other words, the world has taken the side of the Muslim Brotherhood. Thank you very much, Barry Obama. You've done your duty as a good, good, good follower of you-know-what. And I'll let it go at that. Yes, indeedy. It's just amazing to me how dumb people can be. No matter what the evidence is, they still salute this man. It's amazing to me. I mean, should we go to limited war with Russia over the Malaysia air shootdown, as many in the fake conservative neocon media want? Oh, yes. All the liberals and the fake conservatives are saying we should go to war against evil Putin, the KGB chief. And the same people who claim to be conservatives are now saying arm the Ukrainians and let them seize territory from the Russian proxies. That's what the neocons and the fake conservatives want, like Bolton and his followers, former Reaganites. All of the former Reaganites are for war with Russia. Can you believe this? Pay no attention to reality. The downing of this Malaysian airliner that took the lives of 298 men, women, and children was a horrible act, but it was not deliberate terrorism. Nobody intended to massacre those women and children. It was a military blunder, just like the United States shootdown of an Iranian Airbus by the USS Vincennes in 1988. That U.S. ship thought it was coming under attack, and it shot down the Iranian Airbus. And Ukraine separatists, the Russian proxies, thought that they were firing at an army plane. Why did they think they were firing at an army plane? Because it was being accompanied by two fighter jets from Ukraine. That came out today. Well, they made a mistake. They made a mistake. So what should we do about a mistake? Go to war with them? As this moron Bolton with the mustache wants, Mr. Walrus with the mustache, as John the Madman McCain wants, Insane McCain, John Insane McCain wants war with Russia. He doesn't really want war with Russia. He just wants to pay back his military industrial paymasters and make sure that we make more weaponry and give it to the Ukrainians. Then he will have done his job as a good salesman. Listen to me carefully. Before we destroy the Russian economy and send weapons to Ukraine, think about the consequences, Mr. Obama. Think about the consequences, Mr. Obama. If your friends in Kiev use our weapons and go in for the kill against the separatists, Putin has no choice but to fight them. Is that what you want, a war? You want his invasion now of Ukraine, so now you have to up the stakes again? Is there anybody with a brain in the White House? Is there anybody in the media who thinks these things through? Is there anyone posing as a conservative, even though they may have previously been nothing but government lawyer enforcers for the government, pretending to be anti-government? Is anyone thinking about the consequences of their loose lips and stupid tongues? I hope so, but I'm glad to be doing so for you. This is Michael Savage. Thanks for giving me 15 minutes, and God bless America. Savage.